Okay, there you go. Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Counselor's Webinar Series, Parenting Tips. My name is Ms. Roxana, Roxana Palacios, and I'm the elementary school counselor from early childhood to second grade. Today we have a special webinar because we are doing the same content both in English and Spanish. So you are in the English version today. And we are going to talk about struggles that make kids stronger. Please feel free to make any comments or questions in the chat. I'm checking the chat constantly. So if you want to write anything, please feel free to do so. We want to do this kind of interactive. And first, it's very important to talk about the development of mental strength in our children, right? Because we usually think, what are we doing as parents, as adults, teachers, counselors? What are we doing to help our children be more mentally strong? What are the strategies that we're doing? Are we doing them intentionally or not? Maybe if you want to make some comments on the chat. Usually we don't think about these questions, right? And today I would like to share with you five golden rules that are very important to develop this, um, these skills in our children because this will help them be more equipped to deal with different situations in their life. The first one is Okay, so these are the five golden rules to raise mentally strong children. The first one is make it a family priority to take care of your minds. And usually we are very self-conscious about physical health, like we need to rest properly, the amount of hours at the right time of a day, we need to eat healthy, we need to exercise ourselves, but we're not usually talking about our mental health or how to be mentally strong. So you need to do this a priority in your house and also let your children know that sometimes you might need support from someone else, like an external um, provider as a psychologist or a counselor. As we go to the dentist, right? When we need to check our teeth, we could also go to the counselor if we need support for our mental health. Um, so this needs to be a priority. And there's some strategies that you can um, teach your children to be mentally strong. Some of them are meditation or practicing gratitude. Today is a really special day to practice gratitude. We, not in all of our countries, we celebrate Thanksgiving, but even if we don't, it is a really nice and healthy practice to be thankful and show gratitude about the things and people you have in your life. And, and this image is very, um, is very useful as a reminder because we um, could think as our brain as a muscle. So the more we train our brain to be mentally strong, the more it will develop. The second one, the second golden rule is to talk about feelings. Usually we do not talk about our feelings or think about yourselves. When someone asks you, how do you feel? Typically, we answer good or bad, and those are not feelings. Feelings are um, expressed through words, and we can intentionally teach our children to use feelings language. I'm feeling excited, I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed, I'm scared, etc. In that way, our children could be more aware of their own feelings and could also show more empathy towards others. So it's very, very important to talk about your feelings. The third golden rule is teach your child how to think realistically. Sometimes, uh, I don't know if this has happened to you, but sometimes our children come, I will never learn math, for example. And then a typical answer is, no, don't think, don't think that way. For sure, you're gonna learn math. And even though, it has good intentions is not helping our child to develop this realistic thinking or critical thinking, right? So instead of saying that, you can also express um, how sometimes your brain has this, um, sorry. Okay. 
sorry, you know, people come selling a lot of things. Okay, so sometimes you can share examples about yourself and say, um, you know, today I was really nervous about presenting and I don't know if I can do it right, but I prepare myself, I practice a lot my presentation and I will probably overcome this fear. So whenever your child has these um, pessimistic or dramatic ideas, you can guide them to really think about the situation and look at the real aspects of it. Okay. <laughs> so this image is really important. Like go deeper into the situation and really think what's going on. The fourth golden rule is to role model how to take positive actions. Sometimes we are driven by our feelings, our actions are influenced by how we feel, but other times we can influence our feelings by our actions. So maybe one day your child is not feeling very motivated or inspired to do something and you can actually guide them to continue with their work and through discipline, do a positive action that will help them change that mood or that feeling. You can also model that and say, well, you know, right now I don't feel like cooking dinner, but I know that this would bring um, a benefit for you and for the family because we're having dinner together. And then I decide to do it. And the fifth golden rule is to actively engage in solving problems. Usually when our children have problems, our first reaction is to go and help them. And sometimes this is not the best way because we are not supporting them in um, actually learning how to solve problems by themselves, right? So whenever there's a situation where our children are struggling to find a solution, we can think about options as a team and then your child could decide between those options. But the important thing is that your message is clear that they are capable of solving most of our problems. And if they don't, they can always have you as a guide, but not as a person who's actually gonna solve it. So the important thing is like building mental health or mental strength as a family. And mental strength is not the same as being rude or not showing your emotions. Mental strength is showing your full potential, having the ability to um, be resilient and solve problems on your own and overcome difficult situations and struggles. So this is a really nice quote that I that we are sharing about resilience. Children learn resilience when they overcome ordinary pain. So every day when we allow our children to face struggles and solve them on their own with our guidance, obviously, they become stronger kids, not as a rude kids or kids that don't show their feelings, but kids that are able to be resilient. And I would like to share five situations or five opportunities in which our children can overcome these struggles to become stronger. The first one is boredom. And this is very common. Our children, and, and mostly in these days where they have so many things to play with. I'm bored, I don't know what to do. You don't have to run and figure out something like entertaining for them to do at the moment. They will find what to entertain themselves with. So anytime your child complains about boredom, see it as an opportunity for them to develop creativity and do not rush into finding an activity for them. The second one is choices and it's misspelled. Sorry, it has, it has a C here. Um, Okay, so making simple decisions, help them weigh the options and discover what matters to them. So in the daily basis, according to our children's age, we can encourage and allow them to take 
decisions like what clothes are they gonna wear? What are they gonna drink for a snack? Or what are they gonna play this afternoon? It's important that they start learning that they are capable of making choices on their own. The third one is losing. <laughs> mostly when playing games with our children or when we see that children are playing together, um, we, could, we could encourage them or allow them to lose sometimes, okay? Because that gives them the opportunity to learn that they can handle setbacks and try again. If we start, you know, playing in a way that they always win or allowing them to always win, the message is that losing is wrong and they could start um, showing or displaying behaviors such as cheating or lying or becoming really, really frustrating with, frustrated when they lose. The fourth one is messing up on school assignments. <laughs> Well, the world doesn't end if our work is not perfect. So of course we want our children to do their best, their best work and make an effort on their school assignments. But if they miss one school assignment, it's not the end of the world. So you can use this as a learning opportunity or a teachable moment for them to reflect on what happened with that assignment, what can they improve next time. And the last one is arguing with a friend, okay? So it's very important that we help our children to solve their problems with friends. And actually in the med, we have a really useful resource that is called Kelso's Choices. And in that um, resource, we have like a wheel of choice where children can select from um, strategies such as going to another game, talk it out, please stop, say, please stop or other strategies. So it is very important that when we, um, when we notice that, or even siblings, when we know that children are having an argument or a discussion with another child, we can just um, give them the strategies that they could use to solve the problem by themselves. Okay, so think for a moment one time in which you didn't rescue your child from a struggle, you didn't go and rescue your child from a struggle. And how did you feel about that situation? This is just for you, a reflection, but if you want, you can share on the chat. Let me see if anyone wrote something. So, and we would, I would like to finish with this quote. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken adults. So it is very, very important to start developing resilience and mental strength in our children now, because then, and I, I tell you as a therapist also outside of the school, um, most adults who struggle with dealing with, um, you know, challenging situations could have learned those skills when they were children. So this is really important for us right now as teachers, as counselors, and I think for you as parents as well, to give them all the tools they need to be able to deal with um, challenging situations on their own, of course, with our guidance. So now we have questions and comments. Thank you very much for joining us. I, I would love you open your microphone and share any question or comment that you have or write on the chat any questions or comments about this topic? Yes? Do you have any questions?
Okay. <laughs> okay. No one has questions or comments. We, we really thought about this topic because it's really important um, that we reflect on this. Usually we want the best for our children and we want to avoid them from having problems or struggles or conflict. And we want to do the best for them. But, and that's perfect, right? But in the in the day-to-day -day activities or circumstances, it is also very positive that we allow them to struggle a little bit um, just for them to develop the skills that will help them to deal with situations as adults. So thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate that, have, that you came to this webinar and we are going to post this recording on our YouTube channel in case you want to revisit it or um, check it out again. Next week, we are having a webinar about growth mindset, and it's going to be for parents um, from for parents between early childhood three, EC3, and second grade. So I hope to see you next week. Have a wonderful afternoon and see you next week.